Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and we're proud to share stories that help showcase the diversity of the larger Portland area. Yeah, Elizabeth Din here with our final story of the month, Liz. Hey, Jenny and Todd, I'm really proud to share this story, and hopefully something we can all learn from the story as well. This is actually about the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, which hurt and disrupted many lives. It created an absolute ban on Chinese laborers immigrating to the United States, marking America's first significant law restricting immigration. It also placed new requirements on those already here in the country. And if they left, they had to get certifications to re-enter, which was very hard to do. Well, I visited the Portland Chinatown Museum, where one man is showing us how the pain from the past can also teach us about resiliency. You mentioned this is a special place for you. Why this is so meaningful for you every time you set foot in here? Yeah, the Portland Chinatown Museum is very meaningful to me because um, my family, several generations, lived in Chinatown going all the way back to the 1870s when my great-great-grandparents moved here from San Francisco Chinatown. Darby Lee Poe Price is a docent for the Portland Chinatown Museum who enjoys leading in-depth tours. While telling me about the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, he explains how it directly impacted his own relatives. This is a photo of my great-great-grandfather in 1903 with his three youngest sons. Darby's great-grandfather, Joe Chin, used this picture as part of an application to return to China to find a second wife. That's after his first spouse died. He had a store to run and couldn't take care of the young children on his own. So he came back from China a month later after finding a wife, and they told him, you can't come back in because you don't have proper documents saying that you ever entered the U.S. legally. Despite living and working in the U.S. for many years, Darby's great-grandfather and his new wife were forced to go back to China. For a lot of us, it's easy to be like, that's a painful part of my family's past. I don't want to touch that. You look at it a different way. I grew up not knowing much about the Chinese family history, and I encountered elders who didn't want to talk about it. They said, well, that was really unpleasant. You know, that was then, this is now. Let's just talk about now and the future. But then there were other elders that would talk about it, and I would ask them a lot. That curiosity grew into a career for Darby, who was also a professor of Asian American studies. I was really fortunate to get enough information from elders to get names and dates that I could bring up to the Seattle archives. And they have an incredible collection of immigrant records on Chinese. The Chinese are the most documented ethnic group in America for immigration purposes. I found hundreds of pages on them. I found all these incredible photographs. And now read the uh, interviews and just get full histories. I was approaching it like, like a detective, like an investigator, like, wow, you know, like a researcher. Through that research, Darby also discovered how his great-grandfather Joe had quite the determination to return and resettle in the U.S. So he found white witnesses that had done official business with him, like tax collector, the person who had collected the bill for the cemetery for his wife, and they came forth and they said, yes, we've known this man for 15, 20 years. He is who he says he is. So two years later, he was allowed to come back in. It took him two whole years. So the children had no parents for two years. By then, the, they were already placed with other people to take care of them. Oh my gosh, yeah, the resiliency in your family uh, and so many families. Resiliency is something that we can learn from the difficulties of the surviving uh, family that we had. I just learned so much in talking with Darby. Darby is just one of many docents who lead tours there. And if you want to take one, be sure to make a reservation ahead of time with the Portland Chinatown Museum. Or, of course, you're welcome to visit on your own as well. They are open Thursdays through Sundays. Uh, Todd and Jenny, what's interesting, too, um, I just thought it was really interesting how he said that typically a tour would be about an hour long. Mm -hmm. uh, and so with him, though, you might want to go an hour and a half because there's so many interesting stories. Yeah. And in his case, connected to some of his family as well. Yeah. 
But really it's about like, you know, it's hard to dig back to our past, but with them they're like, yeah, it's okay, we can learn from this. Mm -hmm. And he was like this researcher, like, oh my gosh, I knew all about my relatives through this story. Well, and did they, so he found the kids that were placed with other families? Yeah, so, and... well, yeah, so his relatives, those mm -hmm. kids of his great-great-grandfather, yeah. they ended up, and he said a lot of families were like this, if they had to go back to China or they were stuck there, other families would essentially like adopt them to help raise them, depending on the situation. Right. Um, wow. So many families were torn apart yeah. uh, and were broken up as a result. Wow. Community wow. helped really raise many of these children. Yeah, very yeah. 